Hey guys, in this video we're going to work through a couple problems for which the difficulty is probably on par with your first semester general chemistry course in college. So these are going to be acid-base neutralization problems and you can see here that the first one is asking us to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide needed to completely neutralize 300 milliliters of 12 molar H2SO4 or sulfuric acid. So the first thing you have to recognize here is, of course, this is an acid-base neutralization because we have an acid, H2SO4, and a base, sodium hydroxide. And for the first semester of general chemistry, the most important definition of an acid and a base is that acids increase the concentration of H+, while bases increase the concentration of OH-, or hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So there are other important definitions of acids and bases, but especially for these stoichiometry type problems, these are the best ones to know. So you can see here that in this general reaction, one hydrogen ion reacts with one hydroxide ion to make one pure water molecule. So they, in a sense, neutralize each other. And this is what we mean by neutralization. So you can see that for every single H+, we need a single OH- in order to pr completely and properly neutralize. So they want to know the mass of sodium hydroxide, so that is NaOH, needed to completely neutralize a certain amount of H2SO4. So the first step for all of these problems, I like to write out each one of my acids and bases and show what they're going to dissociate into. So acids and bases dissociate into their ions. So NaOH is going to dissociate into Na+, and OH- or hydroxide ion, while H2SO4 is going to dissociate into 2H+, or two hydrogen ions, and a single SO4-2- compound. So you can see here that while NaOH generates an OH-, H2SO4 generates an H+, and this matches with our definition of acids and bases over here. Our, our base generates OH-, as it did. Our acid generates H+. And we know that these are going to neutralize each other. And that's what they ask in the problem. How do we completely neutralize a certain amount of H2SO4? Well, we know they need to react in a one-to-one -one ratio. So since NaOH only makes one OH-, while H2SO4 makes two H plus ions, we are going to need two moles of NaOH to neutralize one mole of H2SO4. And you can see that here because for every one of these, we make two of these, but for every one of these, we only make one of these. So we need to double the amount of NaOH relative to H2SO4. So ultimately, this is gonna be our neutralization reaction here. We're gonna have the two H pluses from the H2SO4, and then we're gonna need two OH minuses from the NaOH, thus we have to get twice the amount of moles of NaOH. And finally, we will produce pure water, or we will have neutralized our H plus and OH minus. So we have to fit this problem into a general path or approach that we take to get mass of sodium hydroxide. So ultimately, we want to end up with grams of NaOH. But they started off by giving us a volume of H2SO4, or milliliters of H2SO4. Well, since they gave us 12 molar molarity, we know we can get to moles of H2SO4. And then from there, we can simply cross the mole bridge, and we know that uh, we need two moles of NaOH to neutralize one mole of H2SO4. That's how we're going to cross this mole bridge to get from moles of H2SO4 to moles of NaOH. So this was really essential to recognize this here, that we, we need two moles of this for every one mole of this for neutralization. And then finally, we know we can go from moles to grams of NaOH. So I'll walk us through this down here. I already have the work written out. So we started out with 300 milliliters of H2SO4. And because we know it has a molarity of 12 molar, we can then get two moles of H2SO4 from this volume. So whatever units we have up here, we have to cancel them down here. And you can see that milliliters of H2SO4 is gonna cancel with milliliters of H2SO4. And we wanna end up in moles of H2SO4. And since we know that it's 12 molar, that means 12 moles of this per liter, or 12 moles per 1,000 milliliters. Notice how I changed it to milliliters so that we could cancel out this 300 milliliters here. Okay, now we're here, we got moles of H2SO4. Now we need to cross this mole bridge to go to moles of NaOH. So we have to cancel out these units down here. We'll cancel out moles of H2SO4. 
and then go to moles of NaOH. And we know, uh, based on these reactions that we wrote out here, that we need two moles of NaOH for every one mole of H2SO4. So that's key here. So now these units are going to cancel out. We'll be left with moles of NaOH. And then finally, all that's left to do is go to grams of NaOH. And we know from the periodic table that there are 40 grams of sodium hydroxide per one mole of sodium hydroxide. And you get that simply by adding up the molecular weights of sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. You should get 40 grams. We'll cancel out our, our units here of moles of NaOH. And we will be left with grams of NaOH for our final answer. And we know that when we multiply out all the numerators, we'll get a number. We multiply out all the denominators, we'll get a number. And when we divide those at the end, we will get our final answer in our desired unit. So you should need 288 grams of sodium hydroxide to completely neutralize 300 milliliters of 12 molar H2SO4. Okay, this next acid-base neutralization problem says a 0.409 gram mass of an unknown triprotic acid is titrated using 39.5 milliliters of 0.204 molar NaOH, or sodium hydroxide. Assuming the acid's hydrogen ions, or H+, was completely neutralized, what is the molar mass of the unknown acid? So there's a lot of jargon here that we have to work through. So triprotic, first of all, triprotic means an acid that can donate three protons. Tri means three, protic means dealing with protons, so it can donate three protons. And titrated is another word for neutralization. It's kind of a technical neutralization uh, process that chemists use to determine unknown concentrations. So what's important here? Well, in any acid-base neutralization reaction, the first thing I like to do is write out my acid and my base and dissociate them into their ions to see what I need to neutralize. So a general triprotic acid that's unknown, I'm going to write that as H3A because it has three protons to donate and it's attached to this A here, which I'm just going to call the rest of the acid. So that's going to donate its three hydrogen ions because it's triprotic, and it'll be left with this A3 minus the rest of the acid over there, the counter ion. NaOH, we already saw in the last problem, is going to dissociate into simply Na plus NOH minus. So you can see here that in this problem, we need three moles of NaOH to neutralize one mole of this triprotic acid. So I wrote that here. We need three moles of this because in order to neutralize three hydrogen ions, we need three hydroxide ions. So three times as much of this is necessary to neutralize one mole of this, right? So think about what they asked here, right? They want to know the molar mass of the unknown acid. So what is molar mass? Well, we know that's grams per mole, right? That's what we want to end up in. Molecular weight or molar mass, same thing, that is grams per mole of this triprotic acid. But how do we get there? What did they give us? Well, first, we know that we, we titrated or we neutralized it, and they say that the, we completely neutralized it using a certain volume of a certain molarity NaOH. So we can take a similar approach to the last problem where we have a certain volume of NaOH, and then we know since we have molarity, we can go to moles of NaOH, and then for moles of NaOH, we can finally go to moles of the triprotic acid by crossing this mole bridge, and we found the ratio here. And then finally, we, we can get from moles to grams per mole because they gave us this gram amount, right? So we'll have everything we need if we can simply get moles of the triprotic acid. And remember here, molarity, 0.204 molar of NaOH, molarity means moles per liter. So I'll remind you here, 0.2 04 molar, that is equal to 0.204 moles per one liter of solution. Okay, that's very important. So let's start out here with milliliters of NaOH. They gave us 39.5, and we're going to have to cancel those units out to get to moles of NaOH, right? So we'll put down here Mole, uh, milliliters of NaOH and moles of NaOH on top because that's what we want to go to, right? And we know the molarity was 0.204 molar, which means 
0.204 moles per liter or 1,000 milliliters. Notice how I had to use milliliters here to cancel out the milliliter units that they gave me. So now I'm in moles of NaOH and now I want to get to moles of the triprotic acid. So I know that if I want to cancel out moles of NaOH, I've got to put that unit down here and I want to end up in moles of the triprotic acid. So I know that for every one mole of the triprotic acid, I'm going to need three moles of NaOH. So really you could have written a one here and it would have gotten you the same answer. I just kind of put a question mark there because really mathematically we're solving for this value. We're just using this ratio in order to get us that value. So we'll multiply all of our numerators uh, because remember now we have our final unit that we want to end up in here, moles of our triprotic acid. And we'll multiply all of our denominators and we'll divide those numbers at the end and you will end up with 0 0.00269 moles of the triprotic acid. So that's what we wanted. But they didn't ask for that. They asked for the molar mass of the unknown acid. So we need the molar mass, grams per mole. We have moles now and they gave us grams. So grams per mole will give us 152.27 grams per mole. So that is the final answer there. Uh, kind of a tricky problem. They're asking you for sort of an unusual thing here, but it's really all the same principles. Um, but I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any questions, please contact me at facebook.com slash tutoring, and I'll see you guys in the next video.